I'm Dan from Levika Photography and today we are looking at small LED RGB panels and these things are cool. Uh, recently a client came to me wanting to do a photo shoot for some specialty flashlights and I totally agreed to it and wanted to light everything with gels. So when I went out to buy new gel, gel material I discovered that these lights actually cost the same amount as the gel material I was going to buy on Amazon. So anyway, I ended up buying a uh, um, GVM uh, 10S lights for the RGB, and then we've got the Iwata Genius Pro 01 uh, for our main light. And this was actually the lighting setup that I used to do these photos. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at each individual product first. So this is the Iwata Genius Pro uh, GP01. And this is a small video light and uh, let's do a quick unboxing there it is about the size of a cell phone um, not quite as thin uh, this light has very fine controls and the color accuracy of the Kelvin settings is extremely accurate so basically uh, this says it has a uh, CRI rating of 97 plus and a television lighting consistency index rating of 97 plus 2600k to 6000k which is a pretty broad spectrum it does have a built-in battery the battery life on this is excellent and if I run at 5% power I've got 10 hours of use on this so that changes obviously when you crank this thing up so if I bring it all the way up to 100% it's going to say I have uh, 1.1 hours, so 1 hour 10 minutes, basically. That's pretty good. Now the other thing too about this is, if you just saw that, if I put the light upside down, the LCD actually flips over with it too. And let's say you're filming and you just want to take a break, but you don't want to set the light up again. Most lights reset when you turn them off. This one has this little on-off switch here that just turns the light off but saves your settings. Now there's a sliding switch on the side that will allow you to just turn the whole thing off, but if you do that, it resets your settings. Now if you press this down hard, then it's a turbo button. And that function is actually really cool because it takes this from a 17 watt light to a 24 watt light. One thing that you really need to know about lights is a lot of people talk about lumens and lux but it's not consistent because they always talk about the distance between the light being on to its subject. That can be measured anywhere from 18 inches to 6 feet away and they'll put that as their rating on the box. All of these lights nowadays actually have the same style of LED. So this is a Cree style LED and all of the current LEDs out there this size use the exact same wattage. So the easiest way to find out how bright a light is, is just to look at the wattage of it. And you know, for a light that's this size, you expect this to be 10 watts, which is what it is. Uh, for a light that's this size, you would expect it to be less because it's a smaller light, but in reality it has more LEDs. This has 17 watts at full power, or when you put it in turbo mode, 24 watts. Now to give you an idea, if you look at like say a light bulb that's 90 watts, a 90 watt light bulb nowadays uh, takes anywhere from 13 to 15 watts to power that 90 watt equivalency of light. Uh, that's the way that these are. So you could look at this as being like a 120 watt light bulb. That's what it's pretty much consistent to if you're looking at incandescent lights. Now the one thing I do like about this is this magnetic diffuser that goes on here and if I hold it up on the side you can pop this in and it'll keep it completely flat and then you just pop it out for extra diffusion so when the lights on you can have two settings you can have it like that or you can pop it out and get it a little softer like that that is a cool feature um, that is also the downside of this light Let me just touch that off again the reason why is because this diffuser is very delicate and I don't see any replacement diffusers online so I really wish if if they sold these on Amazon I'd buy a couple just to have extras because that part of it is a little bit delicate but not 
a deal breaker. I just, I really like the way this light works. Now, when you buy this online, it actually comes with all this extra crap. Here's a little case that says Iwata for um, the knuckle that comes with it. And then it comes with a little three-legged tripod with a lock, and I'm not sure why. This baffles me. It comes with a little cell phone style holder. That way, if you want to run around with it like a cell phone, you can. I, again, don't know why. And then there's this per gear selfie stick that per gear throws in with it. This is fine if you have somebody that's hand holding the lighting. Um, I've actually used this quite a bit, so it's not so bad. And this on the tripod, believe it or not, it actually screws in the butt just like that. So if you want a light on a stand, it kind of comes with its own stand light that's fairly tall. You know, that's really not so bad. So this is the case that comes with it. And the case itself is actually made pretty well. Uh, this thing charges via USB-C and it appears to be a nice cable that I've never opened. Even the cable is made well. That's a braided line with anodized ends. It also comes with a carabiner clip and let me just open this up so you can see what's in here. So it's just a, a little carabiner but it actually has a real spring in it. A lot of times you see these carabiner clips and they've got this crap spring that doesn't spring back very well. This one does and it, then it just comes with two uh, keychain rounds. I have used this pretty much uh, every week at some point in a video somewhere or just lighting stuff that I need to light. Believe it or not, I was blowing insulation in my attic and I used this light to light the attic. And the reason why is because of the extremely long battery time and it charges really quickly. It charges in, in an hour. So this is what the Iwata Genius Pro looks like on the camera. Now one thing I didn't tell you guys about yet is if you look underneath it and from the top, you're going to see these little vents. And those are actually cooling ports that help cool the light down. I heard that they're coming out with RGB versions of these lights, so I will definitely try to grab one just to show you guys because seriously, this is like the best well-built light I have seen at this size. This one looks like it's a tank, but literally it weighs the same weight as two cell phones put together. Uh, it is not much at all. Operation is really simple. One light touch turns it on and then one heavy touch turns on the turbo mode. Now look at the screen on the back of the camera. The camera right now is color calibrated to 5000K and the light that's hitting the wall it's hitting it perfectly at 5000K. There's no color shift on the back. So to me that's just extremely impressive. So this has got a, uh, a 4700 milliamp hour battery on it and it's actually the equivalent of this. This is pretty close. This is a 4800 milliamp hour battery and this weighs probably as much as that light does just to kind of give you an idea so yeah this thing is just really well designed there's a lot of good engineering in that all right so this is the great video maker uh, GVM 10s light now this is the older version but it pretty much shares everything except for the fact that it uh, doesn't have Wi-Fi. The newest version can be controlled by a Wi-Fi app, uh, but from what I understand, the app isn't so great, so I don't know if it's worth it, but they are the same price. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't know that this one is actually still for sale on Amazon, but the new one is. Uh, but like I said, it's the same thing, so it doesn't really matter. Anyway, here's the light. Here's what you get. So this is 128 LEDs. The way this is laid out, is 64 of these are RGB and 64 of these are white. So this has a television consistency index rating or a CRI rating of 97. I think that that's actually true, but that's only true at 5600K. So if we put this on Kelvin on the back, and we'll just fire up this other one and turn it way down so you can see what I'm talking about. So I believe that the white LEDs in here, and you can see the RGB LEDs are not turned on at all. It's just the white LEDs. And yeah, I believe that these are actually CRI 97 at 5600K, but the second that you start turning the dial to go to different temperatures, all accuracy is thrown out the window because the RGB uh, LEDs fire up and try to make up for it, and they are not 
color accurate as far as that goes. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's just one of those things that you have to know about. So don't expect to get accurate 2700K out of this or 3200K. It's not accurate there. Uh, the other thing you need to understand about this is build quality wise, this is not bad. For 60 bucks, they seem like they're pretty good. They're a decent size. You know, they've got a, a good diffuser that slides over the front of it. And it's a double-sided diffuser, so you can have a gloss side or matte side sticking up, depending upon which one you want to do. The matte side out makes it slightly softer, um, so that's always a good thing to know. On the back of this, you've got three buttons, the on-off, and then you've got brightness, and then the hue, saturation, and Kelvin button. And this is actually a knob that you turn and then a button that you click. Uh, this is not a clickable button. So that's actually how you make all the adjustments. And I'll show you on this one since the battery is already in it. So we turn this on here. And so basically what happens is you click on this button and you'll see it's toggling through hue, saturation, and Kelvin. And so in hue mode, that's where you can actually make your fine color adjustments. Now, this is where this light shines. This thing puts out really great color for lighting. So you don't need gels and you can just change whatever color you want on the fly. And it seems to do everything except for like deep oranges. Um, that's as orange as I can get. And then it just kind of flips over to red. But if you turn this slowly, then you can kind of cycle through just about every color that you can think of. Plus you can change the saturation of it. So as far as actually generating just good solid color for video uh, like a gel filter these are excellent but outside of that the build quality is negligible the stuff in the case is negligible um, the other issue that this thing has is that it sucks the life out of your batteries so if you want these things to actually last you gotta remember to remove it before you put this away um, the main thing is if you leave the battery in, it's going to constantly just train, drain the battery without it being turned on. So that's actually pretty harsh. The problem is it will take these down to zero. And if you know anything about charging batteries, the more that you bring them down to zero, the shorter the battery life has. So just make sure that you pull these out when you're not using them because it will just suck them dry like a little vampire. So anyway. What else comes in the box? Um, you get the charger for the battery. Obviously, you get one of these batteries. And then you get a uh, 110 cord. And this does actually allow the light to operate at full power, which is a definite bonus. A lot of these panel lights that are this size uh, will only allow you to operate at like 50% power or less. So that's cool. And then it comes with a uh, hot shoe mount adapter. The, my biggest complaint, though, is this case. So the case itself is made really well, but the insert for it, you can see I've already got a blowout here. Um, the insert's made out of this really cheap plastic that degrades really fast. So not a huge fan of that. But you don't really need the insert in this anyway. You know, for a $60 light, it's kind of like what you expect to get. But the bottom line is, these do RGB color very well, and that's what they need to do. So here's what the GVMs actually look like on the camera. And, you know, these are older style panels. They're not exactly made pretty well. Mine looks like it has marks all over it, but it's really it's just this plastic thing that I haven't taken off. The protective film, um, because I have to protect it from myself. But anyway. Uh, the cool thing about this is it's very easy to dial in your color, make it look like whatever hue you want it to. For as small as these panels are and as light as these are, and for the price point, this has the best bang for your buck for RGB output, as far as I can tell, because these are like 60 bucks a light. To me, that seems like that's a very good price to pay for it. Uh, what I don't like about these lights are the fact that it goes in 10% increments on saturation 
and your brightness goes in 5% increments and it doesn't really seem to work that well. Like from five to on, that seems like that's more than five to me, but that's just my personal opinion. I don't think these real stats on the back are all that great as far as accuracy goes. But like I said, if you're just looking for an RGB light that's inexpensive, that gives you a lot of good light output, that's flicker free, uh, these are definitely the way to go. Right, so this is actually what I did for my client and they manufacture this light, the PL Pro. And don't worry, this is all airsoft, it's not real. But uh, I just wanted to show you what the scene looked like. So this was done in the studio and we used a fog machine and then I had uh, one gel on one side, well actually one RGB blue light on one side and one RGB red on the other. These were turned to about half power and then the uh, Iwata was placed in the center just to give an illumination on the hand to bring back normal skin tones and this was at about I, I want to say it was about 50% to 70% if I remember right. But these are not photography lights. These are actually video lights. You know, when you're shooting this stuff, don't expect them to be like super bright for photography because they're designed for video. You don't want to blind your client when you're actually shooting them. So in this case, uh, I really wanted to use these. I shot them handheld at f5.6 but I had to shoot them at ISO 800 uh, which generated a little bit of noise but I'm using A7R3 so it really wasn't a big deal and then we edited everything to make it look extra real and the level of detail that we got out of this was really good but just mixing in a little bit of regular light with the gels kind of blended everything together but realistically, before you give me a hard time about these photos, yeah, we know we have problems here in America. Give me a thumbs up, give me a like, leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel for more information like this. Otherwise, we'll talk to you guys later. See ya.